so much for being able to solely focus on Hater's Guide. But in this situation, I think this kind of video is justified. Sometimes change is done kicking and screaming, and sometimes it's swift. Either way, it's over. An empire has fallen. Two of them, potentially. Two of the greatest coaching tenures in the history of football itself are officially over. One seemed like it was inevitable for a while. The hoodie has been forced to hand in his tattered remains to New England after 24 years of service. The perpetual domination of the AFC East has long ceased, but it's still surreal to see him go. Don't be fooled by sentimentality, it was time. If you watched the Patriots at any point this season, you regretted it. They were completely unwatchable. The defense had been wrecked by injuries to key contributors. And that offense? Good lord, it was fucking terrible. A unit transported back to the Patriots of old. 1990 to be precise. What the hell did he do to Mac Jones? This was the hoodie's greatest sin. He took a promising quarterback, one with the highest floor of anyone in his draft, and turned him into an utter shell of himself. Turns out that's what usually happens when you give him three different offensive coordinators in three seasons. His rookie season was McDaniels, and he had his best success. Second year? You had two guys that never ran a fucking offense at the NFL level before and Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. Trusting your top QB prospect with a guy who ran a QB sneak on a third and nine. Great fucking going, Bill. Yet even when bringing back the butt chin into the fold, it somehow got even worse. You'd be lucky to get a pack of chewing gum for him in the offseason. Mission success, target destroyed. It leads to the next great strike against him, his GM tenure. There's no argument that Bill Belichick is still a strong master of team defense, but in terms of offensive personnel decisions, it was bad. It got bad in a hurry. His drafting record, Nikhil Harry over all that talent picked after him. Tyquan Thornton's done nothing at this level. The answer is your number one wideout this offseason was Juju Smith-Schuster. The dude couldn't assess wide receiving talent with a damn. And regardless of the defensive gems he found, it was part of the demerit against him. A lot of people are gonna say that Brady made Belichick, but I disagree with that statement. I always felt it was a codependent relationship. Brady needed Belichick, and Belichick needed Brady. And man, they created a dynasty that pissed a lot of people off, myself included. But the odd thing was that the older I got, the more I respected them. To create a cluster of Super Bowl champions once is hard enough. To do it twice in separate eras of football? That's a legendary feat. Even if the luster had worn off the hoodie's reign, we witnessed one of the greatest coaching tenures of our lifetime. One we may never have the honor and privilege of seeing again. Quite an ironic thing that the final team to beat him was the Jets. The franchise he had consistently owned for years on end. Writing out his obituary on a paper napkin. The greats tend to go out with a whimper. For the most part. The more shocking one is in the college ranks. Nick Saban is retiring. His long stranglehold on the NCAA is over. Now this came out of left field. There was no indication that Saban was going to be moving on. Alabama just backdoored into the college football playoff and had taken Michigan to the brink in their matchup. Saban, unlike Bill, was still seen as being at the top of his game. A legendary recruiter and built Tuscaloosa into a powerhouse of the age. An empire in and of itself might have fallen. And this one is harder to fathom since it was so sudden. There was no retirement tour. No grand ceremony. No roar of the cheering crowd as the players lift him on their shoulders one last time. Just the end. I understand why he's stepping down. The college football grind is a hellacious one. Especially with the recruiting development and mentoring of young men. Not to mention the whole game planning thing. It's a dangerous situation for the Crimson Tide if only because most of their recruits are opting out and headed into the transfer window. George is licking their chops. And the person that's gonna have to replace Saban in Alabama is gonna have the largest microscope placed upon his face. Think of all that's happened this week. Belichick gone, Saban gone, Carroll gone, maybe more in the near future. There was only one confirmation with all these moves. We're entering a new era of football. The old quarterback guard has faded away to nothing but Joe Flacco and Aaron Rodgers auditioning for Infowars. The last coaches standing of the era are Tomlin, Harbaugh, and Reed. And who knows how long they last. I remember when I was in college and the likes of Tomlin and Harbaugh were the young guns of the league. Time flies, man. It shows us that the powers of change are inevitable. Even if you try to cling on to the great moments, the cold declines of age will always march on. I've said it repeatedly. We all have an expiration date. You either a Nick Saban and go out while you're still fighting, or you're the hoodie and experience rock bottom before you're relieved. Empires fall and empires will rise in their wake. 
and those will eventually fall as well. All that will be left are the memories, good or bad. Mostly depends on the team you follow. This ends the chapter of two coaches that dominated most of our football lives. Whether they go on from here is anyone's guess. Belichick might, but Saban's probably done. I'm guessing a future in the broadcast booth for him. To two men who I wasn't fond of as a rival for obvious reasons, but respected in the end? Take care, gentlemen. And may the rest of your days be fruitful and bright. He's got a cold, so I'm not going to kiss him. Thank you.